many of us ever know what it is to become the perfect version of ourselves? This is Decoding Superhuman with your host, Boomer Anderson. Hey guys, it's Boomer Anderson here, your host of the Decoding Superhuman podcast. I want to take the time and say thank you for listening today. You have a limited amount of podcast time, and I really appreciate you spending it with me. Before we get started, I just want to recap why we have this show. This show is about exploring the vast world of health. We go all the way out to the fringes, back to the mainstream, and I bring on experts to separate true from false and to give you bite-sized pieces of actionable information, which you can use in your everyday life, to perform better. Before we get started, let's have a word from our sponsors. It's the holiday season, and guess what? Holidays are filled with holiday parties. I know, it's shocking, right? But I recall going to holiday parties and just receiving a couple of things. Upon entry, you get your sugar cookie. The next thing you get is a glass of eggnog. What are you supposed to do if you're trying to be healthy? All of these things are laden with sugar, but yet you want to be social. Is there an alternative? Is there something you can actually do and still stay healthy? The answer is Dry Farm Wines. Dry Farm Wines is the biohacker or health enthusiast answer to alcohol. It's a delivery service which ships anywhere in the United States and directly to your door. Rather than just labeling themselves the healthy wine producer, they actually go through the process of lab testing all of their wines. They ensure that the wines are mycotoxin or mold-free, they're low in alcohol, they're low in sulfites, and they're diet-friendly. Yes, that means that if you're on a ketogenic diet, if you're on a paleo diet, you can use them too. Dry Farm Wines ships directly to your door. And so how do you get started? You can go to dryfarmwines.com slash decoding superhuman. And right now, you'll get an additional bottle for just one penny. Yes, you heard correctly. One bottle of wine, one penny with your first order. My guest today is Dan Guter. Dan Guter is a lot of things, including a biohacker, an epigenetic coach, a family man, and he helps out with decoding superhuman in his spare time. From an early age, Dan wanted to become a doctor because he saw the need for answers regarding health and well-being within his own family. Things turned out differently, and Dan became a professional in the marketplace. He has over 20 years of experience in lean management and service management, but on the side, he's passionate about optimizing health and well-being. He's been traded as a certified epigenetic therapist and has gained a wealth of knowledge and experiences over the past 10 years when helping other people. Dan is driven to empower his clients so that they can take control of their own health. And I just have to say, he's an all-around good guy. The format of this episode is a little bit different than others. Rather than delving into specific topics, Dan and I just were having a conversation one day, and I decided to hit record. In this episode, you're going to hear Dan's answer to the question, what is epigenetics? I hope you enjoy. And as always, the show notes are found at decodingsuperhuman.com. And for today's episode, it's at backslash gooter. That's G-U-T-T-E-R. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Well, let me let me start at the beginning because you just mm, had the introduction about epigenetics. Uh, I started having this interest in this uh, field a long time ago. It's about 20 years ago since I've been uh, into uh, this health and consciousness uh, field. Which so health and consciousness you got into 20 years ago. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a long time. But it wasn't called that uh, like that in that uh, in that time. So I always wanted to become a doctor. So I um, applied for uh, this medical uh, study, doing it here in Amsterdam. But things turned uh, out slightly different because I uh, ended up doing a study in economics, and that's a whole different field. I uh, I became uh, a manager. The last uh, 15 years or so, uh, I've worked in the marketplace, being a manager of several companies. Yeah, you look like a pretty in shape guy. I mean. What what have you been doing over the past 10, 15 years? What what did you start out in besides, you know, just broadly health, wellness, consciousness? What it, what really gravitated you or brought you into the field? Well, it it has, it's has to do with family issues because uh, in uh, in my family it runs a, a disease called cystic fibrosis and that triggered me my brother has it that triggered me of thinking about w- well how, how did he get it uh, and what can you do about it so for me it's always uh, like a second nature to to be conscious of 
making uh, he healthy choices. What what exactly do you do in terms of you know uh, your health regimen? I guess you can say what. How did that start, or what does it look like now? Yeah, well, well so I I uh, ended up being a, a a manager in the marketplace, uh, but in the meantime, I I got interested in this field of epigenetics. So I started reading books listening to podcasts, uh, attending classes and doing a, a course on uh, epigenetics. I got really into this field be because of my interest in this uh, health and wellness uh, domain. What really sparked, what was your first epigenetics experience? Is that what, what book, what article really do you uh, remember? Well, I'm, I remember this book uh, by um, Bruce Lipton. Okay. You know him? Dr. Bruce Lipton. Yeah, yes. Dr. Bruce Lipton. Mm -hmm. He's a cell biologist uh, from uh, from the States. I don't really know where he's from specifically, but he had this um, presentation I listened to, and I thought, I, I need to know more about this guy. So I listened to this this book uh, several times in the, in the car. So every time I listened to it, something new came up, and I thought, okay, and he ended with this remark that it's all about epigenetics. Do you mind just giving them a broad definition? Epigenetics, like uh, most people uh, look at me like they frown and uh, they look at me, wh what the heck is epigenetics? So I get a lot of glazed eyes yeah, when I talk about too. it. The whole thing like genes and uh, genetics is like the cookbook you have. It's all, all recipes are in your DNA, but the way it gets expressed is determined by the circumstances you live in, like what you eat, how you sleep, uh, how much you exercise, and even the things you think about have impact on the expression of your genes. So that's kind of a very broad definition of epigenetics, but epi means above or uh, around the genes. So epi is the whole concept of everything that's uh, involved in expressing your genes and your genomes. So that's that's a whole way, new way of thinking, which evolved the last 10 years or so. Um, like you have much more impact on, your, on the expression of your genes than you people formerly thought. Let's go back to you. So you're reading Dr. Bruce Lipton, who Stanford researcher. You you got interested into epigenetics. And now, w at what point did you start helping people? I think that was ab about five years ago, something okay. like, something like that, when it became more serious, like a more serious thing for me. So maybe I, I've helped people before with with pointing them to uh, the right kind of supplements or uh, telling them about what I've learned so far, but not real in a real context like uh, helping people making the right choices. So that, that started like five years ago. And ever since I got this passion uh, or this feeling of this passion in within me, like I want to do that kind of helping more. With regards to epigenetics, I know you and I can geek out about this for hours and talk about how cilantro tastes like soap to some people, et cetera, et cetera. What are some of the experiences you've had with clients? I, I'm really curious. What I noticed is it's it's a hol holistic. I don't know if it, that's a correct uh, English term, but it, it's a thing that's all connected to each other. So you cannot uh, focus on, on just one aspect of health you need to focus on on the uh, on the whole of of where the, the person who is in front of you is at that moment. So you can look at the nutrition, but maybe that's not the, the answer to, to to the problem of the person who is in front of you. So that's what I liked about helping people, not just giving them advice what to eat or not to eat, but also how how to deal with stress or how to get better sleep. So what I noticed, people uh, really remarkably recovered very fast when they stopped eating food which didn't resonate with their with their body and uh, for example uh, a woman uh, who had migraines for about 14 years well she stopped eating certain foods like gluten like uh, bread people here in Holland uh, eat lots they of bread they love the bread yeah. i think just being in Holland now for almost 9 months the amount of bread and frankly cheese you see everywhere is massive it's it's like bread before after always uh, people uh, even my own dad is getting nervous when he doesn't get his daily bread so the, the whole structure of of a person's life is built ab around this bread and milk thing and cheese so but but what what i notice people uh, when they skip those kind of inf inflammatory foods like cheese and milk and dairy products and this gluten thing people really recover very fast of 
certain illnesses. So if I were to categorize or explain to people what an epigenetics coach is versus sort of a traditional personal trainer, uh, just based on what you told me here, and I, I would say, you know, think of your traditional personal trainer as dealing with exercise and maybe your diet, uh, whereas an epigenetics coach would look at the entire system. So your body as a si or your health as a system, this would be a holistic approach, as you say, to health. So it's no longer just diet and exercise. It's about the whole. Yeah, it's like having all these pieces of the puzzle getting together. Like, well, it's only just for about a few years now that we have insight in, in our DNA and what, what triggers kind of uh, sort of processes. But that's one of the pieces of the puzzle. Well, I think we'll get into this a little bit more later. But how did you, in terms of how did you go about getting started in epigenetics? What did you go out and get a DNA test? Did you get your whole genome sequence? What did you do? The whole biohacking thing was the, for me, to like what's working for me and what's not, and how can I optimize my health and my wellness? The, the whole thing about measuring like your heart rate and your blood pressure and drawing blood panels, all these things together uh, gave me a sort of insight where I was at that moment. So from there, it triggered me to make interventions or change my lifestyle to optimize all those uh, those things by biohacking. That's where, it, for me, it gave me more insight in uh, making the right choices. Take a scientific approach to health, right? So you're looking at health and forming a hypothesis as to what may work to improve your life and really testing. And if it works, you can continue down that path. If it doesn't, shuffle it out, form a new hypothesis. Yeah, yeah and that, that's the whole thing about personalized medicine, a personalized approach. That's what resonates with me. And that that's what I like about this uh, whole uh, epigenetic thing, uh, this coaching, that you can make it very customized to the person in front of you. Absolutely. It's, it's like it is the individualized approach to health. There's nothing more individualized than your own genetics, in my view. And based on your genetics, you start altering and making modifications. I hate the sick care model of health. You don't, you shouldn't just see a doctor to fix a common cold, etc. You should be proactive about this, right? Yeah, that's what I like about this whole human potential approach. Like, like people have so much potential in them. And well, maybe you you recognize that, but in your own environment of people who you deal with, sometimes you see so much potential within them, which which they don't see themselves. So that's. Well, maybe we, we could call it our mission to, to uh, open up the eyes of the people around us for this individualized approach, helping people having uh, more insight into their own genetics and what they can do about it. Absolutely. Well said. Before you go, I want to say thank you for listening today. Did you like the format of today's conversation? If so, do you mind leaving some comments in the show notes? And I'd also love it if you could go over to iTunes right now and leave a five-star review. It will really help us get the word out on decoding superhuman and precision health. I want to thank you very much for listening today and have an epic day.